Hey, welcome to my vlog and review of round three of the 2017 MotoGP season. Deep down in the heart of Texas where my baby done left me. In this episode, we're going to cover everything, including the Rossi versus Zarco incident. We're going to go through the whole thing play by play. And I'm going to tell you why I think Race Direction made the right call giving Rossi the penalty. Circuit of the Americas is a beautiful track. It's a long track, 24 corners, high abrasion circuit, and right away into free practice, the riders were complaining about the bumps. Apparently since last year, the bumps, the increase in the bumps has become so bad that uh, it was giving the, the riders a, a few problems. If you watch the free practices, uh, there were, it was quite a bit of a crash fest, uh, lots of people going down, and some of the riders even suggesting that if it gets this worse again by next year, that it might be hard, if not impossible, for the uh, MotoGP bikes to race there. So it looks like maybe Coda has a little bit of work to do, a uh, little bit of fixing up to do if they want to keep the MotoGP there. It would be a shame to not see MotoGP down there because it's a great venue. They've got super passionate fans and I think it's a great venue for MotoGP. So starting off with the most impactful event, a DNF for Vinales. Here he is waving goodbye to the rest of the pack as he slides out of competition early and into the pastures. Uh, going into the corner a little bit hot. I think it was the end of the second lap. Tire probably wasn't quite warmed up all the way. Went in a little bit hot, trying to keep up with uh, Pedrosa and Marquez and Rossi in front of him. Went a little bit wide, and uh, that's all she wrote. So Vinales not having the best showing in Austin. I'm sure he's going to come back next race and try to put on a much better performance. But in the end, his DNF ended up giving Rossi the championship lead. P1 Marquez. Expectations were high on Marquez going into this. He really needed to deliver a solid performance, if not the win. That being said, I'm sure there was a little bit of pressure on the world champion given the fact that he hasn't had a great start to his season and that he doesn't feel 100% comfortable on the bike, uh, along with the fact that, you know, Texans love a winner and he's consistently delivered for them. So in the end of the day, Marquez pushed through all that pressure, delivered a solid win, and nailed the bullseye down in Texas. And I love this little shot here, Rossi and Marquez giving each other the thumbs up after the race. It's nice to see that there's still a little bit of friendship there underneath all that competitive animosity. And Marquez as well tipping his hat to Rossi in the post-race press conference saying that the reason Rossi was on top of the championship at that point was his consistency over races. You know, it's lap by lap consistency is what wins races and race by race consistency is what wins world championships. P2 Rossi. This is really a win for Rossi in my books. Um, not a great track for Rossi. He didn't have a great free practice again, so to put that second place in and bag those 20 points was a great performance by him. But of course, nobody was talking about his great performance in Austin. Instead, they were all talking about the Rossi versus Zarco incident. So, as promised, let's take a quick look at the play-by-play -play and break it down, and I'm going to show you why I think Race Direction made the right call. So here we are at turn one. This is where the whole thing sort of started. Rossi seems to go a little bit wide. At the same time, I think Zarco, who had been close behind him for a few laps, was already thinking about making the pass and he was cutting it in tight so that he could get the drive out of the corner. The momentum of this carried through turn two into turn three and four where the whole thing happened. So here we are looking at turn three and four. Coming into the apex of turn four, that's Pedrosa. In the middle is Marquez. And that big thing coming out of turn three that looks like somebody managed to sneak a Harley Davidson bagger onto the grid is actually Rossi and Zarco riding right on top of each other. So the most important thing to look at in this picture is the distance between Pedrosa and Marquez and then Rossi and Zarco in the back. And the second thing to notice is for anybody who says that Zarco's move on Rossi wasn't at least a little bit over the line, a little bit strong, look at this. I don't know how two guys can ride their motorcycles on the same piece of pavement like this without somebody going down. Luckily, neither of them did. But anybody who says that it wasn't a little bit strong and that Rossi had any choice but to go off the track, I think this picture shows them that that's just not true. Rossi, I think, at this point, would rather be leaned over more the way Zarco is to make the next corner. But of course, he can't because Zarco's right there. So inevitably, Rossi had absolutely no choice but to stand it up and uh, avoid wiping both of them out by carrying through the the corner and back onto the track. So here we are, this is where Rossi's just coming back onto the track and you can see already his position is in between sort of Marquez and Zarco. And if we skip ahead a little bit, this is coming into turn six, I believe. Uh, this is where I noticed it live. I saw Marquez or Rossi get right on the back of Marquez. I believe he got even closer to this as they got into the apex of the corner. But of course, if you look behind Rossi, you can see that Zarco's nowhere in sight and that Rossi has now gotten right onto the back of Marquez. So this is the final shot. It's the little straight in between turn six and seven. If you look to the very left of the frame, you can see Pedrosa there just going out of frame. And then there's Marquez with Rossi right behind him and then Zarco. And if you think back to the first picture, relatively speaking, if you look at the positioning of Pedrosa and Marquez and Zarco, they're all relatively in the same place they were. 
But of course, Rossi, on the other hand, who was back sort of where Zarco was, is now kind of right on the back of Marquez. So it's for this reason that I think Race Direction had no choice but to make this call. On one hand, I agree, Rossi had no choice to go off. But on the other hand, I think that if he had sat in between Zarco and Marquez for a corner or two, the penalty probably wouldn't have come around. But of course, if you're thinking from Race Direction's point of view uh, at that moment, if they don't put the penalty in and then Rossi finishes just ahead of Marquez or just ahead of Pedrosa, which of course almost happened at the end of the race with Pedrosa, this really could have been a contentious issue um, if they didn't call this penalty. So I think it was a wise move. Again, on one hand, it wasn't Rossi's fault. On the other hand, he clearly gained. And, you know, race direction made a tough call. I think it was one of those calls that no matter which way they went, somebody would have been unhappy. So, like Steve Jobs used to say, if you want to make people happy, don't be a leader, sell ice cream. And it's pretty clear race direction wasn't selling any ice cream on race day. P3 Pedrosa. It thrills me to no end to see Pedrosa back on the podium like this. He had a rough year last year with the Michelin tires. And I said at the beginning of this year, it seemed like Pedrosa was a little happier with the Michelin tires. They brought something that was a little more Pedrosa friendly. And maybe that's starting to pay dividends. He had a great performance. He was strong all weekend. He led the first part of the race, had a great battle with Marquez. Ended up settling for third because he had some tire issues at the end. But, you know, I'd love to see Pedrosa back up there, at least competing for the world championship. I think it would be great for him, his morale, as well as great entertainment for the rest of us to watch. P4 Crutchlow, riding like a real cowboy down in Texas. He had a great performance, great weekend. It seems like these days either Cal's on the ground or he's at the podium end of the stick. So he missed it by one this time, but a strong performance. On top of that, it seems like the independent championship is going to be a battle between Crutchlow and Zarco, the old Frenchman versus the Brit. If history is to be any indicator, there won't be any love loss between the two of them. The good news out of all this for us MotoGP fans is it looks like there's not only going to be some great competition at the top of the pack, but also in the independent championship. Just makes the whole thing more exciting, and I can't wait to see how it all turns out. P7, Ian Oni. Uh, I said from the beginning of the year that Ian Oni was going to be great on that Suzuki, that that Suzuki and his style were going to match really well. Uh, he's had a little bit of a rough start, although he had a great performance in Qatar before he crashed out. Hopefully this seventh place is going to give him a little motivational boost, help him get a little bit of confidence so he can find his feet on that Suzuki. And I stand by it. I think once he gets his head around that bike, he's really going to be riding that thing like nobody's business. P9 Lorenzo. I said after last race that uh, maybe Lorenzo had found a few things, lowering the seat and changing his way of thinking about the bike that was going to help him start to master that bike. And him coming into Austin and putting in a solid top 10 finish in ninth place, normally something he wouldn't be happy about, but I think given his uh, you know situation on the Ducati so far, it's a great motivational boost, a great confidence boost, and again, showing signs again that he's uh, starting to figure that Ducati out. Uh, people have been kind of dogging him for how long it's taken him. I don't really think that's fair to Lorenzo, given the differences between the Yamaha and the Ducati, as well as the fact that Lorenzo was on the Yamaha for so long. You know, a couple races is nothing. This ninth place shows me that he's really starting to figure it out. He's really starting to get a little confidence. And I can't wait to see what he's going to deliver going down the road on that Ducati. So that's where we stand after round three of the 2017 MotoGP season. Rossi leads the world championship. I'm going to leave you with this. One of my favorite shots out of the weekend. Hats off to whoever took it. And don't forget the next round, May 7th, Jerez, Spain. Leave me a like. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. And let's look forward to more MotoGP 2017.